Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Sebastian and I'll be showing you just what you can do with a photograph, some stock footage from Action VFX inside of Nuke. This is a really simple technique, it has some limitations but there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. You'll be learning how to create depth from just a photograph using the 3D project node. You'll be learning how to work with 3D objects inside of Nuke and also compositing 2D elements in a 3D scene. Alright, let's pop into Nuke. Alright, so we're inside of Nuke. Uh, let me just quickly go over what we're looking at creating here. So we're going to do virtual projection mapping. Uh, we're going to map this image onto very simple 3D geometry we're going to create here inside of Nuke. This is something you can import from Maya or 3ds Max or whatever you're using. Um, but for this sake, we just need very simple 3D planes going into the street here representing the, the left, the right, and the bottom street here and then just an end card for the for the final for the background really um, so the cards you can find under the geometry menu here and any kind of 3D object you, you're using is going to need a 3D scene which is going to go into a scanline renderer and a camera so these are the, the, the nodes that you need for any very a very basic 3D scene. So once you have these, you can just start plugging these in here, and any 3D object is going to go into the scene like this. This goes for anything you know. You can use cubes, uh, any kind of shapes really. But for this, for the simplicity of this, I'm just going to use cards. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to plug this in here so we can see. The goal now is to just align the plane so that it matches up with our street here. Right now you can't see much, that's because the card is blocking the view. So a handy trick here is just to change the render to solid plus wireframe so that you can actually see the, the grid of this so that you can start aligning this. And, and all, another thing to notice is that this effect depends on what kind of lens and camera use for this photo. In this case a basic 50 millimeter on a full frame sensor is looking pretty decently as you can see here. We already have some pretty nice lines going here. This is just something you want to make sure before you start uh, any kind of project like this if you use a photo of your own. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and align these cards and then I'll get back uh, and show you how to project uh, your image onto these planes. So um, I've gone ahead and, al and aligned these cards so that it sort of matches up to our street here. Um, so we've got a left side, uh, right side, and a four, and then just an end card in the end of this uh, little tunnel that we've created. So now the next step will be to project the photo, this one, onto these cards. And with that we're going to use the project 3D node. And this node asks for an input, which is going to be the photo, and then a camera. The camera is going to be the same as your render camera. Just copy it and paste it here. And the smart thing here is to rename this into uh, projection camera because you don't want to be messing around with this one uh, this is going to be static through our animation all the animation is going to happen in our render camera so now what you're going to do is this project 3d node is in, it's outputting a texture and that texture is basically what you're feeding into here uh, so just make sure you change this from render uh, solid to textured so you can actually see the texture it's outputting and uh, I'm just plugging these in now. So now you're going to see the same image as the original photo, and that's just because it's projecting straight on from your camera. But once you start animating this camera, then you will see some some actual depth going on here. So from the first frame, um, just make a keyframe in the camera, and I'll just set the the global frame range to 1 to 150 so that we have some range to go on. Um, so on 150 I'm gonna just move the camera ahead a little bit like that 
And uh, this looks a little bit confusing, so you can just turn this off here in the settings for this projection camera. So now, once you start playing this off, you're going to see some actual depth going on here. Um, but right now, it's it's rendering the full 4K resolution of this photo. So let's just change the, the project settings back to full HD here and add a reformat node after this scanline render here. So it's going to render a little bit quicker. And let's do a proxy for this. So now you can start to see some of that depth that we were looking for. This is exactly what we want, so let's just start to see what we can do to improve the look of this. Some of this tower here, oops, uh, some of this tower here is a little bit stretched, so you can just move this plane a little bit out of the way, because the end, end of the street is, the end of this depth part is basically on this building here. After this is just 2D. We don't need any depth uh, back here. So just move the card a little over so that the, the tower ends up on the end frame here. You can do this with this as well a little bit just to move it over like that. So now you get a little bit more accurate result. All right, so we have our very basic 3D scene here with some camera movement. Now we can start adding some stock footage. So I want to add a smoky plume coming out from the, this building so that we have a focal point in this street. So the camera is sort of moving towards something, which will make the shot more interesting. Um, so let's just bring in our footage. It's an EXR sequence. It has an alpha channel which makes things a lot easier for us to work with. We also want it to be nice and settled, so we'll start at frame 700. Um, so in order to offset that, I'm going to use a time warp node. And we also want the time warp node to slow it down a little bit, since this smoke is going to be in the far distant uh, wind. It's not going to be moving as fast uh, as this shot here. So I'm going to make a frame, a keyframe here at 700, um, and I'm going to move this over to the front, the start of the clip. And then I'm going to move this down a little bit so that we, we are slowing it down slightly. And you're going to see that it, it's starting to split up frames here. It's interpolating between the frames. Um, that's not a problem here because it's sort of just selling the smoky effect even more. So once that's set up here, um, we can start plugging it into our 3D scene. But we we kind of want to have the smoke separate from the main 3D scene we have here. And that's just because we want to be able to uh, color correct and, and, and add effects to it, whatever. We, have, we want to have more control over it when we composite it. So I'm going to have another scanline render and have another scene and a card to put this on. Plugging these in, and we're going to use the same camera because we want the same settings, uh, the same movement uh, as the original one. So now you can plug these in here. All right. So now you'll see that the, we have our smoky plume on the card in 3D space. We can put this card, we can align it within our street so that we we have the same 3D space of this um, of this smoke. So we'll just move it way back here. This is more just a, a rough placement for now. So in order to see this, let's merge together these two outputs. We'll put the, the projectioning results in uh, B and the plume in A and we'll start to see things happening here. I'm going to put this before the reformatting is taking place. This is just because we're going to be uh, creating the edge here and we want as much detail as possible. So we're going to be doing the, the, the keying and the masking in 4K before reformatting down to HD. But in order to see the smoky plume, uh, we need to do some trickery. Uh, we need to format it back uh, up. <laughs> so let's do a reformat here. Let's do a box. Um, 
and let's just force this up to 746. So now we should be able to find the smoky plume here somewhere. <laughs> uh, we can scale it up so that it fits uh, our view. So I'm going to change the resize top here to fill um, so that we're filling the frame so that it's not really clipping off the top here. And now we can move this around uh, a little bit. Just gonna change the pivot a little bit, so we're not really confused about where we're moving it. All right. So now we we're seeing some. So now we can just align it a little bit more carefully so that it's fitting nicely here. So we're gonna place it a little bit under these buildings so that we have some distance between the the edge of the buildings and the, the end of the, the stock footage we have. Alright, so the next step now is to create the, the mask for these buildings. Uh, in order to do that we can just do a very simple Luma key here, which you'll use the keyer node. Uh, and then I'm gonna, just going to jump into alpha mode here and then we can tweak it down so we get that nice edge here. Um, right. We just want to clear this so that we have an all white and all black uh, contrast here. And then we can start to add our roto here to get rid of all these, all this white here. Like that. Just very roughly like that, and then change its mode from over to minus. There we go. And you also should key this. I'm sure you'll do this uh, this rotor a little bit better than me. I'm just working very roughly here. 150 was it? Do this back and fifty. Like that and move it. And let's make another rotor for the sky. Like that. Actually we need to animate that too. What we're looking to get here is just, you know, this area here, nice and clear. We, we're not gonna, we don't need to worry about all this around here. Uh, so once you have that set up, we can see how it looks like in here. So now you see that we have a, our edge here. It's very sharp. It's jittery. So let's do an erosion to blur it in a little bit like this. And we can also do, once this is merged, I like to have a defocus node just to smudge things up a little bit between the, the clouds and the, the roof here. And inside here, you can just pop a simple roto. Around it. And since we're working with a weird format, you just, we don't need any clipping with this roto here. Um, that back here and let's just make sure to animate this roto as well again I'm sure you'll do this much better than I I am doing right now I'm just working in very general terms here so you can see we have a, a pretty decent edge which the clouds are emerging with so since we have this smoke plume here in a different scene than our projection mapping and in a different output here we can color correct it before putting it into our main compositing tree over here so after this reformat node you can you know add in any kind of color correcting nodes you want so I'll just you know bring down the contrast here 
bring down the blues like that and you can just tweak this you know as much as you want i'm just going to go very quickly over this and i'm going to bring in a light wrap node and it helps you blend in any object you're bringing into a background by using the light of the background and blends it and wraps it around the edges of the of your your any kind of assets you're bringing in there so you can just start messing around with these settings you know just tweak it around so it looks good in your scene i'm going to keep it fairly discreet on two so you have some of the edge details here still you know you've changed a lot of this edge information and blended it in more nicely in compositing what we're looking for is to have as much control as possibly possible with each element that we create so that we can tweak things as much as we need so that it'll fit better as a whole so now we have our smoke plume in there and let's add our final little asset here to create more depth you know to sell this depth effect since we have created a 3d scene here we can use the space right here to you know add to our effect so we'll add in some particles that will be floating around here in the street in front of the camera so I'll add in one of our falling ashes uh, footage and uh, it also has an alpha channel which makes it easier for us so I'll just pop it up here I'll bring in another card and we'll create another scene and finally our scanline renderer so we'll be using the same camera as we always been using we'll bring this in here now we have our third scene set up with, a, with an output here and we're going to bring this output after the reformat node here after we've formatted back to HD because this texture is just 2k uh, we don't really need to bring it up to 4k and then bring it back, back down so let's just put it in here after the reformat plug it in like this so now we have two layers here to work with and so now we'll just place these ashes into 3d space correctly so we want to create several layers here we want to have a foreground layer closer to the camera a middle middle ground layer and then a background you know around here in the end of the street so the first layer uh, will have so far so close to the camera that the camera passes it you know it'll really sell the effect more i'm just gonna adjust the frame range here so that we're not confused so around frame 100 we want the camera to pass smoke so we're just going to bring it just past the lens here the camera passes it like this it's going to look really cool in the in the final render you know you can see here we're pausing the the ashes and it's going to be almost like the camera is passing it you know floating through through the street through the ashes and everything it's going to really sell the effect we also want to uh, slow down this footage as we did with the plume with a time warp node. So at frame zero, we have a f frame one. We have a, a key. I'm just going to create another key at frame 150, and I'll move this back a little bit, like just over 50 frames or so. We really don't want it to to interpolate too much. It's going to look weird, so we just keep it nice and discreet like this. Just make sure you have the interpolation set to linear as well. So once this is set up, we can copy this and create another layer. And this will be our middle ground. And we'll pop it over here. It'll look uh, smaller, a little bit more sharp. We'll bring it up a little bit. So come around here. And to avoid some repetitions, we will offset this a little bit, you know, by around 100 frames or something. That's all we need. So right now you can see that we got some more of that depth. We have the foreground moving much faster and then the middle ground a little bit slower behind. And we'll have another layer even further back, which will be sort of our background layer like that. You know, these three all help, really help to get some of that depth really 
really looking good. And then it's being a little bit intense around here, so what we can also do is just add a, a little grade in here and do the multiply a little bit down. So it won't look as intense. You just you know use this on all of these layers. Like that. And you know you can just keep duplicating these and you know adding more layers of depth. I'm just gonna keep it at three for the sake of this tutorial, but um you know there's a lot you can do with this once you have this 3D space set up. Uh, so it's really just up to you how much would you want to add, you know, the, the things you can do out of just a single photograph, you know, it's it's a lot you can play around with and as well along with these stock assets, you know, you can create a lot of cool things. So before writing this out, I'm just going to add a few final adjustments here. I'm going to do a color correct node after this final merge node here. I'm just going to do a very basic contrast. Pump up the shadows a little bit, make them a little bit colder. You know, very subtle adjustments. Still want some details in this cloud. And I also sharpen it ever so slightly and around one like that. And another thing I forgot to mention is we can do one more adjustment here just to blend this in a little bit more nicely between the smoke here and this building here. So right after the 3D projecting has happened, I'll do a grade in between here and I'll mask out. Let's look at it like that. And I'll mask out just so that we're getting the part right in front of the the smoke. And this part I'll grade down just a little bit like this. So we're getting some shadows on this roof, so it's not really that bright, and so it's not really popping too much. It's more discreet. Like that, I'll mix it down. It's not sticking out too much now. Very subtle, subtle little adjustment. And now, finally, we can add some grain to this. Very slightly, very discreet layer of grain, which goes on top of everything just to make it blend more. Not too sharp. All right. So that's looking good. So I hope you found this tutorial interesting and useful, and I hope you learned something new. My name is Sebastian. Thanks for watching.